Hi, I'm Ryan Payne with Garage Grooves, and today I have a tech tip for you on diagnosing parasitic drains and some new techniques we can use to find them. So for a while now, we've been using amp clamps to identify uh, if a vehicle has a parasitic drain or not. And remember to always you know, reference your uh, workshop information to determine if it is a parasitic drain or not. So you get that customer comes in, they say my battery goes dead after a couple days, we put this clamp on there, and now we've identified, okay, it has a, a drain, excessive draw. So we've been using this technique for a while, right? We'll grab our meter and we'll actually do a voltage drop test across the fuses to determine which fuse actually has current flowing through it, right? That's keeping everything awake, that's drawing on the battery. And we find that voltage drop because of the resistance inside a fuse. It's very small, but it does cause a voltage drop. The problem with that nowadays is these newer vehicles and the amount of fuses they have in their fuse boxes. Just take, for example, this 2012 Suburban. You know, we have 30 or so odd fuses in this thing, um, not to mention the ones we have inside the vehicle. Um, and the other cars, they may have 50 or 60 fuses inside of them. So it can be very time consuming to go fuse by fuse to find which one has current flowing through it. So today it's a, a little bit of a new tool. It's, it's really not new uh, overall, but to the industry, it's something we've really just now started to grasp and started to use for diagnostic purposes. So what I have here is a standalone thermal imager. Um, a lot of different companies out there make them. Uh, we've had good luck with a lot of them. Um, but the one we're gonna use today is actually the smaller standalone unit that goes on a phone. So I guess it's not really standalone, but it attaches to a phone. Um, charge this thing up, plug it into your phone. Um, I can take pictures or I can take videos off of it to review later on. So this vehicle actually does not have a parasitic draw, but what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn the headlights on and show you the technique, what you're looking for. It's gonna be very obvious to you uh, when you go and do your own diagnostic on a car that actually has a drain. So let me go in here and turn the headlights on. All right, so we've got the headlights turned on on our Suburban and I've got my thermal imager connected to my uh, phone. So let's see if we can identify what relays or fuses in this fuse box that might actually have current flowing through them. So we turn it on and we just come over here and take a look. And as this thing calibrates there, you can start seeing it's pretty obvious. I've got two relays and you can see in the footage there that you can actually see the, read the numbers on the relays and the fuses, it's very clear. And I can identify really easily that that relay is hot, way hotter than the rest of them, as well as that one. And then we come over here to these two fuses because I've identified these two right here, there's definitely a hot spot right there. All right, and it's kind of more on one than it is the other. And if you can get your hands, you know, still enough, you can get a good uh, thermal reading actually on it to see, uh, see what, it, what the temp is. So now that we have identified those two relays and this fuse, let's actually take a look. Um, this one's real easy that we have the uh, fuse lid cover on this one that has um, fuse locations on it. Let's take a look at that and see if we can identify what it is and if that does line up um, with our headlights being on. So I got my fuse box lid here and conveniently, you know, it has our fuse locations and a description of what they are. If you look at the far right side of the box and you remember from our image, that standalone fuse back there definitely had heat to it. And if you look at it in the, uh, in the diagram there, it shows that's our parking lamp relay. Okay, I had my high beams on, so that makes sense. That should have heat there because that current is flowing through that relay. Now, if you move up to the left side of that fuse box, right, there's another relay there. We'll look at the description on that one. That's our headlights left and right. Okay, now remember we also had fuses there. Two fuses had heat right there at them, one a little more than the other. So 30 and 32, if you look, were those two fuses. 32 definitely had more heat than 30 did, which makes sense because if you look at the front of this Suburban, the right side headlight is out on this thing. So it shows you how accurate this thing can be that two fuses side by side, I can identify which one has current flowing through it and which one does not. Thank you for watching today's tech tip. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and smash the thumbs up button for us. And for more information on Garage Grooves, visit us at garagegrooves.tech.